gone. I've been watching. If anybody who's her friend on Facebook, she's gone through some major transformations. <laughs> like she's lost a ton of weight. She was like the uh, TS BBW girl. And I don't know that we can call you but a little chocolate <laughs> these days. And um, went from blonde to brunette. And you've been doing the world tour. So tell us what you've been all of this up to. Girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've lost um, 50 pounds. Woo. Wow. Oh. Uh, Weight Watchers and Working Out to Insanity and T25. Will you please tell the story you were telling me in the truck about when you were, like, tagged a BBW uh, oh. TS? What your head? Yeah, like, um, at, actually, after the show, after I was on the show here last time is when the realization of me losing weight hit really mo a lot. Um. When I got into porn, I was labeled BBW, and I was not even as heavy as I was. Actually, I think when I got into porn, I was maybe a little bit heavier than I am now. And everybody called me BBW, and I actually didn't know what that was. And um, I started looking into it, and I was like, I'm not really BBW. Because when you type in the word BBW, a lot of girls come up that are a lot bigger than me. Oh, Yeah. And so, um, even when I went to BBW Fan Fest, a lot of people would say, you're not BBW. No, you're Chublet. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, I always felt like, okay. But in the porn world, I was considered BBW. So, I let that, I guess, take over in some way. I uh, just didn't care about how I look. I mean, how I ate healthy or whatever. So, I gained a lot of weight throughout the three years of being in porn because they said you were BBW, oh, yeah. so she's like, I'm going to be a BBW. Bring it on. But I think the day was I was walking out of Smith's and walking to the bus, and it's like 100 and something degrees outside, and the bus stop's not that far, walk, and you're carrying bags of groceries, and you can't even catch your breath. And that was the day that I realized, okay, I need a change. But the thing was hard for me was that because I was always labeled the BBW transsexual porn star, would I lose oh, fans. fans and my whole fan base and what I've created. And I also thought I would lose a lot of the uh, girls who looked up to me as an inspiration for doing the things that I did. Um, in a lot of ways, I was the first girl to, to publicly come out and start my own porn and do my own company. And, uh, produce a lot of BBW porn for transsexuals. So uh, I felt like, okay, is the role model now not going to be the role model? And am I telling girls that it's okay? For so long, I always said it's okay to be whoever you are and you're still beautiful. But here I am trying to lose the weight. And so I had to let all my fans know I, I kind of walked away from the industry for a while just to do it on my own. I didn't really update my website that much. I really didn't social media that much. I really just, if I was going to do it, I wanted to be like, okay, I'm doing it and then I'll come back. Because I didn't want to sit there and say I'm losing weight. And then what happens is I don't lose it and I come back. Or I just, right, right. so I kind of just wanted to do it and then come back. And so that was the kind of the thing. And then I think in November I released some sets and people started seeing the change and and what was ironic is, is in January, um, some of the companies who had once told me no, they wouldn't hire me, had seen some of my pictures of my weight loss, and they wanted to hire me. Yay! So, uh, I, I guess... Mean, yay, <laughs> but I also want to say stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, I mean, so it makes kinda, me feel both ways. Yeah, so it's kind of like this whole thing. Well, and then I decided, you know what, I've been blonde for so long, everybody's always seen me as blonde. Dark hair is actually my natural hair, so I thought... Well, if I'm going to do this whole change, I'm going to do it all yeah, one time. So I did that. And so I, a lot of people don't recognize me. A lot of people don't know it's me a lot of times unless they recognize my tattoos. Um, I just went on tour. So I met a lot of clients who didn't realize they had seen me before. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, it's whole. Now, wait, you won an award. Yes, I won the tranny award for Voluptuous diva voluptuous model of Yay, the year that you yeah so, that was deserved because that was a long time coming wasn't yes it? Yeah. i've lost every award i was ever nominated for <laughs> even the bbw fan fest award <laughs>
Well, we we would have given you our own oh, award. We would have given you. An award. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm happy. I, it's the first year they they did a, a voluptuous category. And what's voluptuous is what's really good about the categories. It's not. It's just not um, BBW. It's girls to have curves and girls. So you're competing. Chocolates. Yeah, you're competing against not just big girls. Chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> not Twiggy and her so, pal. No, and but so to me, I don't time. care if it's a regular woman or a trans woman. I like some curves, <laughs> no matter what. Well, it's like well, it's like this. And I told everybody I'll always be voluptuous and I'll always be curvy. Um, it says voluptuous diva on my chest for a reason. So I was just gonna ask you because. <laughs> Well, because I got this tattooed on me before I was ever a lot of weight, so okay. I was probably even smaller than I am now. It's because I look at voluptuous as like Marilyn Monroe and Absolutely. Jean Harlow and right. all those. Those girls weren't size zeros, right? And so voluptuous the to one me is that Jane uh, Russell, Jane Mansfield. Too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. look, cool. yeah, curvy girl. So yeah, I won the Tranny Awards. So next year, maybe I'll be nominated, which they've changed the name to the Tranny Awards, the Transgender Erotic Awards, so we can be more politically correct in terms. So. Do they um, recognize you guys at the ABN? Yes, they do. Is it part of the do. fetish category? Or do you get your own No, category? Transsexual Model of the Year, oh, okay. ABN. And they have a Transsexual DVD release and Transsexual Side of the Year, both at Expos and at AVN. Okay. But at those kind of functions, you're considered second-class citizens, so you don't get the treatment that regular porn stars get. Well, we found, too, that we know some friends of the show, you know, this was the first year that ABS had a BBW yeah. category, and they were saying the same thing, like they had hard, they couldn't get tickets for the red carpet. Yeah, that's what happened to us until we fought a few years ago. Um, actually, I was at Avian two, no, I think it's now three years ago, when it actually happened that we were not allowed on the red carpet, and... Two of the girls I was with were actually nominated, and they weren't allowed on the carpet. I didn't care if I went on the carpet, because I was just going as support to them. But, um, yeah, we were stuck in line for hours. They wouldn't move us in. We asked at one time why they were shuffling other people in and not us in, and they said, well, because they're nominated and they need to be there. And this was all before transsexuals could accept their award on stage. Well, this, that's what happened to the BBW this uh -huh. year. They didn't get to accept their award on yeah. stage this year. So I think that's what you're what's, saying the transsexuals do get to. Yeah. So maybe there's time for the BBW category. Yeah, I think to the BBWs, up, huh? yeah. I think the girls need to yeah. kind of come up forward and be same, able to rise up against the man. Well, yeah, I think it's Which is kind of strange that they didn't have BBW before. I think so too. Uh, so, but it's great that my friend April Flores won the award. So yeah, she did. she's a lovely. It person and to be the first girl. person to get it, I think is a yeah. She's a pioneer in the BBW porn industry, so right doing a and lot. She's of, beautiful. She's oh, very beautiful. She's, yeah, doing a lot of different things, not just straight porn, lesbian porn, and everything else. Right. Queer porn. And we haven't had her on the show. I make out. We did. Local. Yeah, she's not. We had her on when we were when she was. Well, yeah, she was here for AVN. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The weekend of AVN. It was before your time, my dear. Yeah. yeah. April Flores, we did. <laughs> if, if it's a porn star in town, we try to get them on. That's she's first. lovely. She's sweet. Yeah, and then she hosted the first. She Are you selfieing yourself like over here? No, I'm just Snapchatting now. Right <laughs> she's having quick Snapchat. She's Snapchatting during the show. I Are you Snapchatting Snapchat. for us? Yeah. It just sounds dirty, doesn't no. it? Hey, you want to snap? Oh, you people, wanna... yes, people on Tinder always ask me if I want to Snapchat. No, I tried that shit. It's for y'all youngins. Uh -huh. that shit's... Snapchat. I just, okay, I don't... It's like the... That's it one thing I do. It's the picture too much. comes up and it disappears after a few minutes. It's like, yeah. it's a cross. Or after a few seconds. It's mostly it's for people between... like to show off their their um naughty bits and then right. they don't want it on the internet for the rest of their lives. Oh, right. So it's only their short Yeah, time. as soon as you touch, like, as soon as you touch so it, it gives you so many seconds. They said you could take screenshots of it. Screenshot, yeah. But the other person knows you took a screenshot from what I've been told. What of your of your, your Snapchat? There's it's no just, way to know if somebody took a screenshot. Someone said that you did you. you. Okay. Right. Well, I don't take care. Well, it's kind of like a. Want to see my Snapchat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll take a snap of my chat. Okay. But when... it's also kind of hard because you have to hold the the when you answer it when you open the Snapchat and I Snapchat with my brother, so there's no nudies Maybe. going by. I just want to show him, you know, me in the studio. Um. But you have to hold it down. So I guess if you do screenshot, you have to maneuver your other hand there somehow to make it happen. Because as soon as you release, you can't see the picture. 
I mean, it literally is there for like six to eight That's seconds crazy. and then it's you gone. Like I know. They, they lost technology. me when I, I literally I was on it for maybe 10 minutes trying to figure it out. I said, screw this and deleted the app and said, I'll never do that. Again. Well, if I post something on my page, I want it to be there. I don't want it to disappear. So, yeah, it's like temporary yeah. Instagram. Well, it's like Snapchat. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. what it is. Well, and exactly. it's like people, people want to show exactly. people so always go, kids, oh, so their mothers don't see that they've been sending this... selfies to their 13 year old boyfriend or naughty right. bits or the 45 year old guy who's pretending to be their 13 yeah, year old boyfriend. Scary. That's like my brother scary. will send me um, just short Snapchats like him at the bar last night and then my father snoring <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> um, just stupid random stuff so <laughs> but i guess you could use it for other things because when he was out well i won't share all that but he was getting some interesting ones <laughs> <So>. <laughs> look at this girl sucking my dick <laughs> yeah it's like i don't it's yeah, like people always go could you show me some nude pictures i'm like i'm all over the internet honey I don't yeah just care. go ahead yeah <laughs> we've done son see it michelle we, we've been there <laughs> but you know men are so quick to okay story um, honestly, it wasn't me, but a friend um, talking to this guy literally for like not even four hours. And he's like, can you send me dirty pictures? Like, mm -hmm. I think with technology nowadays, men are just so quick to ask for that shit now. And she was like, and you're the reason why I'm single. Are you kidding me? Before I had a cell phone, when I was just dating online, just internet regular dating back in the early 2000s, you know, when you were, when all there was out there was, you know, meet, meet.com and it was you know it was free then it wasn't what it was turned into but uh or match.com uh even then they were asking for dirty pictures of course that was more complicated because you had to go get the 35 millimeter and you had to take the picture and you had to take it to the the one sleaze ball shop that you knew was going to make double doubles anyway but they weren't going to report you for the shit that was on your roll of film and oh, yeah, then you got to scan it in yeah. then you got to scan it on your scanner <laughs> You were like BFFs with the photo guy, weren't you? So you can get all your dirty pictures. Um, <laughs> no, I went to Walgreens during a certain shift when there was a guy there that I knew was making duplicates, but he wasn't going to tell anyone what was on my pictures because they would all know he was making duplicates. <laughs> so I knew. Nice. The one, nice. the one creepy <laughs> masturbator at Walgreens. The creepy <laughs> masturbator. I'm in Walgreens. somebody's physical spank bank somewhere. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my, uh, grandson's father, um, he says to me, mama, so I went to this porn site and he told me and one I had never heard of, but when it said sweet cheeks, I had, I had to shut it down. Mom, it just ruined the whole move for me. I couldn't go no further. <laughs> yeah. That's the danger is having, yeah. being a known porn star. Do you ever have just regular friends come by and go, Oh my God, I saw your porn. Um, I only had one and he, he, um, had to shut down my Instagram because of it. <laughs> uh, he, I don't know how he found it, but he contacted my husband and said, I found these pictures of my real name. I was telling my husband, but it says Michelle Austin. What is that all about? And so only a few of my gay friends have really, but no one really, anybody else has really seen them. Like my family don't know. Now, now let me ask you a question. When you and your husband are hanging out in real life, uh -huh. you hang out as Michelle. No, you're, no, no. no I'm... She's her. Uh, no, I mean, well, I meant by Michelle, but you're still, um, what do I want to say? Like you're still, I mean, I mean, do you hang out as a gay man? No, no you hang out. You're a female all the way. Yeah, right. Okay. That's what I was. She's a straight saying. girl with a penis. Yeah, yes. Right. Right. No. And that's fine. I don't mean, are you Michelle? To them. I don't mean that. I just meant. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. So you live 24 seven as a woman. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. I have no life. desire to be a man. But I now, can fuck like a man though, but <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. how do you how do you just <laughs> that's well, something... you know you got the plumbing, <laughs> but you know <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. So so wait, I want to hear her definition of fucking like a man. What does that mean? Take that hot cock bitch and you'll like it. There you go. <laughs> um, I I guess because um I've had some guys who can't fuck, so um, We all have been there, yeah. been there, done that. I think fucking like a man is someone that can fuck you good and long without coming too soon and also can hit your spot. Gotcha. Now, are you? do you take hormones? No, currently no. no. Currently not. I've been off for five years. It, it does affect your 
porn performance, doesn't it? Um, it can. When I was, I still could get hard and stuff when I was on hormones. But um, to some girls, yeah, they have to take Viagra or something, right, to help uh, to help with that stuff. Yeah. So I, I'm curious about hormones, like just like uh, oral hormone or you like take, injections yeah. or well, either or okay. injections or um, uh, shots or um, I'll give you pills. an oral hormone. You get you get estrogen <laughs> or you get and you take a um, male hormone blocker called like spirolactone. And, and I take estrogen every day. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something you want to tell us? It's no. like people with on menopause. Yeah, because right, I, exactly. I had a hysterectomy. Yeah. That's why I was curious. Yeah, it's the same thing. That's estradiol. the same thing. Yeah. So I did, I was, that's where I was going. We take a little bit thing. stronger, I think. Okay. That's because we have. No, are, no, why have you stopped <laughs> taking them? Do you plan to take them again? Um, um, because cancer runs on both sides of my family, and estrogen is a very high it risk. Is. So it is. doctors wanted me off of it. And um, I'm actually looking to get back on it just because I'm losing my hair really rapidly fast. So it will help stop <laughs> losing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to have to wear a wig for the rest of my life. And living in Vegas. That's tough not. in the summer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Now, see, the estrogen makes me sweat, like, from here up. Like, I'm always, like, when we're out, that's one of the reasons, like, how I'm, I always right. have See, it makes us stop. Because uh, it really? takes away from, it takes away our uh, male, because mostly women never sweat on their forehead. Men do. What? Yeah, the sweat. <laughs> I'm like... Cause I'm girl, broken. We need to go out dancing so you can see the hot sweaty mask. Oh, I, I can't. Go out here more first. I sweat before, on my head. Yeah. I will eventually, like, but I sweat behind my neck first. Yeah. My first drink too, like because of taking the estrogen and stuff. Like, um, my first drink of alcohol, like ten minutes later, I can feel it's like a hot flash. But that's why when we're out, I'm always sweating. Like right like there, yeah, yeah. I yeah, because you're really not supposed to drink alcohol when you're having when you're on estrogen. Oops. I know. But I'm just saying, <laughs> we all do things we're not supposed to. What do. am I supposed to do with my life then? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> now, now give us give us little Michelle cuz some people new listeners and of course mm -hmm. Toxie and Glitz don't know your background. You are from I'm originally from a small town outside of Texas, Houston, Texas, I should say. That had a hard time. That's all Baptists. Was it Dayton? No, God, okay. Dayton's no. That's a little further away. <laughs> Dayton's a little further. There's nothing up. goods come out of Dayton, Texas. No, <laughs> Dayton, Texas. I lived in Texas. That must too. be where Jackass yeah. is from. That's from douchebags. From. <laughs> right, anyways, um. So, and you knew it. I mean, tell us growing up. Like, when at one point did you realize? Like, I think I'm I was a always girl. different. I was always different. I didn't know I was a girl because you don't. People people ask us all the time, and there are there are kids out there that know now well, now because yeah because they so have a whole yeah they yeah there's a whole world telling them i also well i don't think it's also that i think you do feel different and you feel like you want to be like so i was raised around all boys so for me uh i didn't i had a father raised me so i never really had a girl influences around me except my grandma and um so for me i don't think i ever looked at it like that i just knew i was different i knew i liked the boys and i knew i was i was feminine um I, and uh, even when I got into high school and came out as gay is because I related to being gay because I liked men and I liked sex with men and <laughs> liked all that. So that's what I related to. Um, not until I was an adult did I realize I was, I was trans. So um, I think everybody has their own story. Everybody, I, I talk to girls who say they've known since five. Well, if I saw a trans person on TV or something like that, maybe like Laverne Cox from... Uh, Orange is the New Black, maybe I would have, but at the time that I grew up in... You didn't know that word yeah. or what the hell that meant. I mean, meant. not until yeah. I was even a teenager did I see a movie with a drag queen in it, you know, uh, Chuang Fu. Chuang Fu, I Chuang love that Fu. movie. Yeah, so that was probably maybe my closest thing to anything like that. Like but... you're coming out huh, or yeah, something. Yeah, but you don't see... Until you see an actual person living as the opposite sex and see... And when did that happen for you? I was 18. And where were you? At a club. She was a drag performer. Okay. She was on stage and she got naked. And I just go, I just looked and go, and my friend goes, she was once a guy. And she had these beautiful boobs and these beautiful hips and this beautiful body. And I just knew from then on, there was that was me. That was supposed to be me. And I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I eventually did. And I started transitioning at 20, 20. Now, do your does your family know you're fully Oh transition? yeah, my whole family, yes. And they they're okay? Know. Yes. Can they're you all go okay. visit? Do oh, they I go visit? visit all the time, yeah. Oh, that's good. And you you go back and 
your new person. And how yeah. Does, how does dad handle having yeah, a daughter now? Have a daughter. Well, he has two of them that are crazy anyways, but anyway, <laughs> he has three now. Um, my dad was the hardest. It was my dad who took it the hardest, but I also think my dad blamed himself. And I tell people this all the time. I don't have an issue. A lot of trans women have issues with their families calling them by their birth name or whatever. It doesn't bother me. My father still calls me by my birth name. And, uh, but he refers to me as she. So okay. even though that my birth name is really a male name, I don't, he, he does in the respect refer to me as my she. daughter, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> and when he does, when he does talk to people outside that don't understand or know who I am, he'll just say his daughter and whatever. But, uh, a lot of times, and what really helped him was, is that I used, I still write a column for a transgender magazine, but it was a different one. And, um, I wrote an open letter to my father in the actual magazine and then um, I actually sent it to him in uh, Father's Day. And um, I just basically told him that it's not his fault that I am the way I am. And coincidentally, at the same time, he was converting all of our VHS home movies into DVD. And so when you do that, you have to watch it. Right. It has to play. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think him seeing me as a child, it just opened his eyes. That maybe it well, I was out. always that. I was always that way. I was always feminine. I was always different. And I think he always tried to subside it or push it to the side when I was younger. <laughs> There's not your brothers, though. Did... Oh, my brothers are actually the most supportive of. Really, they were always supportive from the get go when they knew. That's really good. Oh yeah, my brothers are. Uh, they're very country rednecks, but they're <laughs> really supportive. <laughs> they're really supportive, and all my nieces and nephews don't know me as anything else than their aunt. So. Right, right. So yeah, I'm Aunt Kiki, so. Aunt Kiki, that's cute, <laughs> that's cute. That's good, I mean, I wish more family, you know, our friend Tyra who was in here, she has no relationship with her family. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, and that's sad to me, you yeah, know, because you gotta you. love whatever. I think that's probably what took me a little while to transition. I probably could have transitioned at 18. Um, it's because I had the fear of losing my family, but I think the key to transitioning to is transitioning away from your family. Like I didn't do it in front of my family. Right. They never saw the transition. They never they saw, saw the final product. They saw the final product and they, um, and you also have to remember to a lot of people, what they think is a transsexual is totally different than what they actually see a transsexual as because they, like my grandma, she thought I was what she saw on law and order. <laughs> <laughs> the man in a dress yes <laughs> or the hooker on the street who got beat up she would call me all the time and say i, I hope you're you okay law and order <laughs> uh she's addicted to law and order and all those shows my grandmother um, too that criminal law and order and criminal minds. yes all them all, all them my grandma my great, grandma watches sure. all the law and orders all the criminal minds um chicago, yeah, yeah chicago pd my dad's the same way and I kept telling her, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. And um, and so I think when I think what hit it for my grand grandma is we were at a Mexican restaurant in the town that I um, went to high school in, and I we walked in and I said, Oh my God, I see some people I went to high school with, and she goes, she goes, Well, why don't you go say hi to them? And I said, No, they won't know who I am. First of all, <laughs> and second, she goes, You don't think they wouldn't recognize you? And I was like. No, they got gonna, boobs. They don't. No, they're not going to recognize me. I think that I think that your family sees you as the person you've always been. They don't. It doesn't right. matter how many times you change your appearance. I think it probably because they be, love you unconditionally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was when the Mexican busboy started hitting on me that my grandma realized everybody sees me as a girl, not as a boy. Right. And that was really good for her to see that. Oh, what we see is not what everybody else sees. It's funny you say that because, like, with my family, I'll be like, oh, you know, I gained so much weight or, you know, this mm -hmm. and that. And, like, you know, my grandmother is actually staying with me right now. And she's like, I just don't see you as, you know, fat, fat, fat and top, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just see you as, as you. So yeah. it's kind of, yeah. It's because... like my grandma tells me all the time. She goes, you were the most handsome boy. God, girls would just just like just stare at you you were just well that's why probably you're a beautiful woman and that's see? what she said she says now you're this gorgeous woman that people just look at <laughs> that's awesome yeah well we know that that's why we look at you <laughs> I say, I, i've been mesmerized by your eyes since you've got oh, here well, thank you. yeah 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 
my dark eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to hate them when I was a kid. I wanted blue eyes or green. Should we go to another topic or no? We'll take a, take a little take. Okay, quick we're break. gonna take a little break. Um, you know, everybody wants to know about like like your real life. So I'm gonna get yeah. I'm gonna get nitty gritty on you, girl. Okay, curvaceous body of Sin City on Vegas All Net Radio. We'll be right back. 